Hi, Neil Brennan here. This is my podcast based on my Netflix special blocks where I talk about things that made me feel like something's wrong with me, that I was alone in the world. And then Jimmy Carr said I should have my friends on and have them talk about it. And we do. We do have our friends on and we talk about our vulnerabilities and we heal the world. My guest today, ladies and gentlemen, is a woman I've known for 15, a good 15 years. Used to do her show on Tuesdays in the belly room. See you next Tuesday. The, the C word. Yeah. It actually stood for cat. No one knew that at the time. Yeah. So that, I'm, yeah, it's a long time. I don't think we spoke until after that because I don't <laughs> That's have a record true. of being friends with you. We, I don't know. I wouldn't call us friends, but right. I. Not but even I, now. I mean, I don't. <laughs> we're uh, respectful. Colleagues. Co yes, or upper colleagues. colleagues. Friends. Like I like your husband. Like I, you know what I mean. Like I <laughs> considered like coming to your party. Thanks. Yeah. It's a, that's Eliza Slashner, everybody. You've seen it was on the link, and you know who it is. You clicked for a reason. To hate watch it is why they click because it you whatever clicks or clicks. Yeah, um, clicks or clicks. All right, so I've seen you go from a girl doing a like a low level show, and I've seen you just you've. Ranked up and ranked up and ranked up and ranked up and ranked up. And it's great. And it's because you write a shitload of jokes. And I tell everyone that. We're like, what? I go, it's, you just have to write more jokes. Than it. That's it. You got to do the work. That's fucking it. There's no Richard Pryor, Dave, Chris, Eddie, Louie, Mulaney, Burr, fucking Schumer, Al. It's like, they just fucking. Did you realize Wanda, through that list, you're like, I should name some women of so course. I don't get canceled? Wanda. <laughs> You like you guys just write a wit just write a shitload of jokes. You have to write a shitload of good jokes. I, I just want to put that out. There. Right. Well, the, the relatively good thing about comedy is when it's not. I'd say it's fair. You can't get laughs really from garbage. Listen to me, because it's it's so fraught with why well, didn't get this and why didn't I get that. It is uneven and it's unfair. But at the end of the day. Nobody is laughing because someone slept with someone. No one's buying that second ticket out of obligation. So someone might get something, I talk about this all the time, that you didn't get or they get it for a different reason, but nobody sustains a career in stand-up if you're not genuinely funny. No one cares. Like no one They cares. don't care. They never cared that I did Chappelle's show, ever. Oh, that's what Ever. you're saying. Oh. It was like, all right, cool. I'll give him a chance. Well, that's the was... credits at the top. It's like, what do you want me to say? I'm like, it doesn't matter yeah. because nobody cares. Yes. So, all right. So your first block, which I love and lets me know that you you came you came to do it. Well, because it was like very few podcasts are like, yo, send in everything first. Right. And it's just, I'm so used to podcasts being like, it's whatever, whatever, or yeah. we could do whatever. And I was like, oh, this is like homework. And so I really wanted to treat the assignment like with respect. For, are you a perfectionist? No. Huh. Okay. I don't think I got into the colleges I wanted because like I almost refused to proofread anything. <laughs> I'm like, let's just get it done. It I'm be fine. the same way. And my career, I look back at jokes. I'm like, you could have done it more. But yeah, there was more fun. there. There was a whole. And yeah, first one, the requirement of vulnerability. What do you mean? Let me let us know the so, requirement in life or in in, in anything else in entertainment and in our society. I'm a very sensitive person and I my currency is vulnerability in my act. I am saying something deeply personal that I hope people will agree with and that is how you gain footing. You do it in a very, I wouldn't call it vulnerable. You do have premises that I'm like, all right, that's a pretty wild thing to say, but you don't say it. Even the way you hold the mic is pretty like masculine. Yeah. I guess like I talk like I talk about having a miscarriage, right? So it's vulnerable in that you are opening yourself up to people's criticisms right. and things like that. I wasn't afraid to do it, but I think vulnerability, like I'm putting your stand up in and of itself is vulnerable if you make it personal because you're putting out there your take and your sensitivities and however you wrap them is fine. But these are things that I these are hills that I would die on and I'm putting it out there to be skewered by someone else or even just talking to you is a vulnerable thing because people online have no obligation to be kind. And so that hasn't been my experience, but go ahead. It's all just it's all, <laughs> it's all so yeah, you it, block words, don't you? Don't you block words on Twitter and Instagram and all that shit? Oh, yeah. But I mean, look, you left one magic, really harsh word. I leave the C word in. Yeah. Just if you want it, you just want to get real. No, but I I think so. It's less that and more. 
we require women, like you have to be vulnerable at the drop of a hat and your vulnerability, the validity of it is gauged by whomever you are speaking to. Meaning like smile more or she seems like a bitch or why don't you let them in? And so whatever you're feeling, you have to like, it's required that that mutate and ebb and flow based on what someone else wants off of you. I feel that with women oftentimes, you know, when you turn in writing, not today because of the strike, but when you turn something in, your female protagonist isn't vulnerable enough. She's not likable enough right. because she's not bleeding and blowing someone. Mm -hmm. And so that's frustrating because even as a woman, I judge other women. Where I'm like, ooh, that was that was aggressive. But then it's like, was it really? Or was she just doing what I would have done? All right. So you think it's a double standard because my standups fucking very vulnerable. I mean, you know what I mean? Like my Netflixes are very vulnerable. Like that's the thing about them. I get the thing on camera. I get like writing or I get characters. Do you think in general in the world, women are more vulnerable than men, just generally speaking? By existing, like physically, yeah. yes, we are softer. We are not physically as strong. And so I think there's that. And then it's that always, must be frustrating. I, I, I talk think about, about that a lot. That must just be frustrating as a woman. Like I have a joke that I've written, which is like, you know who's super misogynistic? God. Like, like God's a woman. <laughs> People always like God's yeah, awful. I'm like, yeah, that's because she are, hates other women. Yeah. Uh, no, it's like real mis like real disadvantages. I talked about this in my stand up a couple specials ago, but yeah, that is not something I have to think about as much just because I am a woman. So I'm like, this is the way it is. But like, you don't have to think you might about like your bodily protection. Yeah, I'm 150 pounds. Like, I know. Yeah. I was like thinking, I'm like, what should I yeah. wrestle you? There is that. There is like, you can't always say what you want because you don't know if someone could just like physically overpower you, you know? And that's why in our sitcoms, the wife is always a bitch and always punching up because the, at the end of the day, the joke is the man is physically stronger. Right. But it's less about that and more just about this requirement, like in dating, it's like, why don't you let him in? Like we're supposed to walk around as these giant open wounds and then you can decide if that was soft enough for you. Right. And I even or see Or you it. be vulnerable and then I'll decide if I, if I want exactly you or not. That's exactly right. You're going to get rejected. I'm just on my way yeah. somewhere. I'm just, that, I was just going to Starbucks. It, it, like even in, you know, I think about when I do people's podcasts, like that, not that you read the comment section, but the feedback of like, oh, that person seems like a bitch or they seem tough. And yeah. you're like, oh, I'm just, I'm sorry that I wasn't crying. And I, I think that we trade in trauma there's this, I'm talking about this now on stage, like there is a reward for sharing your trauma. T show us how broken you are and how much you deserve what you have. Men don't do that as much. And it's great when people open up, but it's like, what can I find that makes me valid? That's so broken about me that, and so I, I do have a mansion because I worked hard versus like, no, I just like got money. And like, just yeah, no, it. I know you can't. Women can't just be brazen capitalists. But and it is fun to bond over that. But like, the the go to is always here's my trauma. Uh, I hear exactly and this validates saying. it. Hillary Clinton, I think, was talking to Oprah or about Oprah. But the the thing that Oprah always had to be, there had to be a giant charity element mm. to Oprah. There had to be, kind of had to be one for Ellen too. To do like, what? I'm giving away. Uh, turtles, all these turtles. I mean, whatever, fucking cars with Oprah, or right. there was like a benevolence to them, or like something maternal about them. Yeah, where Ellen had to give a ton of money to charity and have on like good feel because good stories. I I agree. To like offset, totally agree. Not just public opinion, but it makes you more worthy, and you one must be demonstrative of your altruism particularly when you're a woman with a ton of money to show that you're not a monster. Yeah, but meanwhile, Elon Musk, is like, it, like guys are supposed to be pieces of shit. Literally have a whole bit about this that I'm doing now. It's rewarded in men, like this brazen capitalism. My, I'll just tell you the joke. It's basically like you see some guy in like a realtor billboard. He's got a, a semi-automatic rifle and a 10 gallon hat. He's like, I'm Dollar Dan, I'll get you the best deal. And we're like, oh, this lunatic, I want him. Yeah. With women, it's like, I'm Susan. I do the most for small businesses and women in the community and little yeah. bitty babies and hamsters. You never see a woman with like a full magazine, like, I'm, you know, yeah. come with me, click, click. I mean, running for office, but that's a whole Oh, for other. sure. <laughs> that's MTG. a whole other. Yeah, that's a whole other thing. Yeah, yeah. politics, you know, yeah. the less important stuff, You gotta you have a gun. But you're absolutely right. And I can totally understand 
how fucking aggravating that must be. It's aggravating too because if I don't And I trade in trauma. Like I literally trade it. Like yes. my new blocks is not traumatic enough. I swear to God. Like I watched some clips and I was like, I don't have any of these issues. Am I am I yeah. a fraud? No, no, no. But <laughs> the the stand up part uh, like the Netflix is like the last one, my dad died and I have depression. My dad died and like told me he left me out of the will. Th that's like, all right. People were like, all right, that's tra traumatic enough. Yeah, we're good. And this was like, I just feel isolated and lonely. And people were like, literally, people wouldn't review it because it wasn't like trauma porny enough. There's that. There's a certain level of trauma that like you need to categorically be in mm -hmm. before people will take it like this is serious work. That's interesting. So Ellen gets that thing of like, is Ellen, I do a joke about like, is Ellen nice? Steve Harvey had a list of his demands on his uh, rider or whatever. And they were way worse than anything Ellen got accused of. And no right. one gave a shit. It's And no one even pointed out like, yo, this is a fucking wild double standard. But the other block is the fear that I have in communicating that because the more vocal type of man on the internet will like automatically like I'm a witch for saying that. And it's not a, tra a trauma trade off. Like if this is not to negate anything from your experience of losing your dad or anything a man goes through. This is just me saying what bothers me is that as a woman, I need to like bleed for this and then it's decided right. if it's enough. Yeah. And that's bullshit for you because you're like, this was really awful. They're like, mm, not good enough. And that's yeah. not for anyone to judge that. Like, Find yourself and someone else, but don't require that I walk around smiling, bleeding, blowing people yeah. <laughs> to like decide if like mm, I might want to like her. Well, the other reason I did the the three mics one was because um, because I don't I'm not as charismatic as everybody. So I'm like, let me explain why I'm not as charismatic because <laughs> I grew up in fucking chaos. Right. So I'm sorry. Just know that now decide. And so many people were like, dude, I hated you before. And then I, and I was like, oh, I, I knew you did. Now you don't have to hate me because I have actual problems that I just seem like Dave's plus one. Nope. Hard worker with actual problems. Well, now what? Now what? And then people go, OK, I'll buy Well, it. they'll have I'll to judge you just on your personality and Fine. the way you treat them. <laughs> Fine. Like, I'll take it. But it's not I'm we're not even talking about peers. I'm talking about audience members. Right. Um, then you're not going to you're not going to talk to them. That's fair. Oh, I think what you're talking about is likability and perceived likability. I, I, I totally what I totally agree. What yeah. I'm saying is you do things and you're uh, because you're good looking. Everybody's fine with it. Or no, I'm sorry. Nobody. People are like, she's this. I'm sorry, she's everyone that. hates you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> she's this. She's that. She, da, 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 da. she thinks whatever, whatever. If Dalia Joe Coy like very great performers do it. It's like cool and fun and not manipulative. Whereas your, they accuse you of things that they would never accuse anybody else of. Sure. I, I, I guess at a certain level, I think I will say like the privilege of being at this level is that the jokes are the jokes. I'm not really as susceptible, susceptible to like the feedback of the regular person. Like it would you have also to be, have your audience. I feel like for sure. Um, and there is that trade off of like, I can talk about vulnerable things that, and it might be more palatable than if a guy It's did. easier. Yes. It's also easier from your success level. People aren't going to just see some comedian. But it's like the other... I'm not positive how this works. Do I just like say block and then I talk about something else? <laughs> no, like, you can... See, uh, we literally will just put them up okay. even if you don't consider it a block. The, the vulnerability, the required vulnerability as a commodity, I think is bullshit. I think be vulnerable when you want, but this but requiring it and demanding it. Don't you think it's maybe just a part of show business? Like sure. Harrison Ford has to be likable. Do you know what I mean? Like he doesn't have to be girly likable, but he has to be likable. He has to be like Harrison Ford, George Clooney, Brad Pitt. These guys are fucking charismatic as shit. Some people are like Eddie Murphy is maybe the most charismatic person who's ever lived. Like there are people that are so off the charts with it and have to then behave a certain way no. but but i don't think that there's i don't I, let me just there yeah, yeah. we know people who are fucking monsters uh -huh. that because they make enough people enough money are super successful and they're still in those upper echelons so i think it helps i think the difference is 
being a good person that is charismatic, when you fall, people will root for you to rise back up. Right. And then there are people who are awful and they're really successful, but when they fall, there's no one there to catch them and they stay down. Yes, but I'm I I agree. The the thing that I was saying is like there is a certain amount of you have to be like, and I'm not talking about off camera. I'm talking about just on camera. Are you oh, talking oh, about? I'm talking about off camera. I'm you're, talking okay. about. You're talking about like your if you're if you're a woman and you're you're. I'm talking too about an interview, like something real, like this. Yeah. I did say the protagonist thing because it is a lazy note that you often get, and it's like, why is she unlikable? Yeah. What did she really do other than be real? But no, I'm talking about off camera. On camera, you can't buy that. You're either likable or you're not. Yeah. You're either you either got it or you don't. Right. You could be playing a bad guy and still like Voldemort's likable. Everyone in movies, Steve Buscemi's kind of good looking in person. <laughs> yeah. He plays like, bring in the ugly guy. And then you funny. see him in person, yeah. you're like, he's cement, like, he's, yes. got, he's the, like good, like you have to be good looking. The camera exaggerated the teeth. Okay, so you're talking about behind the scenes. We're talking and, about the regular discussion in Hollywood and we're talking about podcasts, interviews, sound bites, Instagram posts, just things like that are native and real. And how like you are rewarded for being like, and here's my trauma. Yeah. And you can have that trauma in your way of working through it. But then it's like, I was so anxious coming on here because I was like, if I say I don't have OCD or something else that people are afflicted with, then it's going to be like, wow, she thinks she's perfect. And you're just like, I just don't have those things. And I'm not going to pretend that I have. Well, you know, what's story. funny is at a certain point, someone's going to fake it. I'm, Not on here. Do. I'm talking about someone's going to do a special about a thing that happened to them. But they didn't have. That I, I promise you it's going to happen. Yeah. I promise you it'll happen. I know someone who's like, I don't think that someone's trauma happened yeah. on, in, a, oh, in yeah. a show. No, no. That's what you're talking about happens all the time. It happened to me. I wrote a movie about it. Someone lied about their mom having cancer. Yeah. People are already lying about cancer. And because there is the sensationalism around poor mental health mm -hmm. like it is glamorized it's commodified it's i commodified. literally wrote a joke today like i don't think people should uh commodify poor mental health except for me on netflix <laughs> but if you actually have it like it's your i firmly believe in comedy whatever you've been through cancer a mental illness a loss if you live through a trauma, that is yours to do with what you will. That's yeah. the only upside. Yeah. But I think people will exacerbate something because you kind of want the attention for it. I'm not saying who. I'm not saying when they've done this. But I feel like people will get angry that I said that. I'm like, but I'm not wrong because it's so delicious, especially if there's nothing specific about you. And you're like, well, I guess I could play into this. Yeah. Play it up. And then it's rewarded. Yeah. People do it all the time. It's it's called like Munchausen. <laughs> I mean, yes. No, but I often think like I'm out of problems. Right. Do you know what I mean? Like I don't have another sad structure. By the way, like if something happened to you, like that's really awful. Oftentimes, but oftentimes you don't want to talk about it. Like when you're, there's that whole like performative thing. Like you're online and you're like, yeah. hey, you guys, I'm just going through a tough time. Like when something really awful happens that like brings you to your knees, you often don't want to exploit it. Like people yeah. who have serious mental health issues, like they're like, this is not a good time. I am not wanting to share this. Like it is a battle. Yeah. And so that's what gives me pause is I'm like, you talk about this a lot. And I don't know that it's in the name of bravery. I don't know that it's in the name of like sharing it. So you'll be brave. Like maybe. No. Yeah. But, but if you don't get 100,000 likes on this, yeah. you're going to be disappointed. Yeah. But that soda company like is sponsoring this post. So <laughs> yeah, I totally agree. And. I just think there's gonna be some. There's gonna be like a, like what happened to Steve Renazizi, but if he made a show about it, Steve Renazizi is a buddy of ours who said he was in 9/11 for some reason. Literally just said it, and then it like said it and forget it. He just say <laughs> it spread. I told him like he had 25 seconds to go. I just said that. I don't know why. And the, but after 25 seconds. It's, it's You're a psychopath forever. if you say, I said that and I don't know why. Like he just got stuck with a dumb thing in the comedy store parking lot. Right. But it'll be like a bigger, it'll be that but bigger, I believe. You think it's coming. Yeah. That's your I don't, I don't know. I don't know who. I don't know what. You take a guess who. After this, I'll be like, if I said a name, you'd be like, yeah, that person. Yes. For sure. Uh, yeah, we'll see. I actually don't have a person in mind. No, I, I don't either. I truly don't. I'm I, just saying if I could get you to be but like, I maybe. <laughs> No, I it's truly, Steve. I don't have a person in mind. It's just gonna, it's inevitable because there's such a premium put on it now. It's like being, 
It's like being young. Uh, <laughs> being men mental illness is the new youth. Because it's so hot. It's so hot. And then like I think about this and I'm like, oh God, you're just gonna get so many DMs like, because people take things so personally, which is why comedy sometimes, comedy is in trouble. Because it's like, I actually have this disorder. Like if you have it, then you have it. And you should be on our side, annoyed that people exploit it. I don't actually don't it. even think comedy's in trouble. No, it's not uh, Not so much trouble as much as. It's just a pain. You just, your setups have to be longer. What? That's how I see it. Your setups have to be longer. You just have to go like caveat, caveat, caveat. And that's another. Here's like, the pre I, I because actually people aren't think smart enough to just get I, it. Fine. I actually, I think it's, first of all, I think people are exhausted yeah. by it. People aren't that moral. We pretended we were for like six or seven years. Now we're just going to go, yeah, we're, I don't know. Oh, I don't think it's about being moral. I think it's about performative ethics. Like I said Israel on stage the other night and I heard the crowd gasp. Yeah. People don't, they just hear words that they know are words. We're all going to get in trouble. We're like, well, yeah. you don't even know what I'm talking about. I agree. It's performative ethics. But I think people are starting to realize there was, an, I read an article this week about people on Twitter trying to get on Mulaney because he had Chappelle on his show a year ago. One show, Dave did time before him. John hugged him on the way out. And then people were like, he supports a transphobe and all this stuff. And, and it just got no traction. And the guy was pointing out like, this may be the, the uh, biggest performative ethics period may be behind us. Yeah, those kind of things. It's like all you got to do is get the right Twitter bot person yeah. to hold that torch and just get the right amount of movement on the right day. Yep. One on one day that would take down someone's career and the next day it wouldn't. And that's what's so scary. Yeah. And then all of a sudden anyone that sponsors you or wants to do it, they just no, we, we don't want. Yeah. Nobody wants to deal with it. That's what's so dangerous about the words that we say is that they're taken out of context or something you did years ago is upheld by today's values and standards. Yeah. Everything's this anachronism that's put against what's happening now. And everybody's lost their fucking mind. It's just, I just told somebody the other day, it's fucking bell bottoms. It was back. Everyone wore bell bottoms. Yeah, we right. wore bell bottoms. They were fucking stupid. I, we, we're not I'm bell bottom like, people, but I'm saying like, it was a fad. Yeah. People used to say different words. They and they had replaced worse words before that. Like it's it's also fucking uh, stupid. But I but I agree with you that it can be like a scary brush fire. But I I don't mind uh, walking the laser thing and like fig. It's to me it's more f in some ways more fun to say what you want to say. How do I say what I want to say? And if you disagree, you don't even know you disagree. Yeah, because I said the words you wanted to yes. hear. Yes. And, and but I but I yes but yes uh, truly and if you're clever enough which I believe you are <laughs> you can do I believe I understand what you're saying though with the the likability just the requirements the requisites for or femininity or uh, the amount of shit women have to deal with from men from God and from other women it's just like. It would make me really mad if I were a woman. Fiefdoms. 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 I pronounce it fiefdoms. No, one's an instrument. Okay. I guess it could also, yeah, one's an instrument I, and I one is a fiefdom. I could do the old Google. Uh, do it. Do the old, it, it wouldn't be a podcast unless someone went on a. Wouldn't be a podcast unless I got checked for something and called out and turned out I was wrong. Fiefdom. 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 Are you going to keep that in? Yeah. Because <laughs> if I got it wrong, it I'd be shows, like, please take it, it out. It shows my vulnerability. Oh, my God. I like you so much more now. <laughs> so much hotter. Um, fiefdom. <sighs> fiefdom. Tell me. What about it? From the outside in, you seem very boundaried. Like, I had I had the thought the other day, like, driving here. I was like, I wonder if your husband ever wins arguments. We don't really argue. We have a role reversal sort of in our house. Like he's like the super grounded, organized one. Like he's the one that's like, we need to get our daughter home for her nap. I'm like, let's stay out. Uh, she's fine. Let's party. Why can't we party? Just a half hour more. I want to look at shoes. I cringe at like the standard couples arguments and okay. I don't want to have them. I'm like, I'm a comic. Like we are feral animals. Like it's great that we have this nice house, but like I don't want to 
bicker. And so Noah always says to me, he's like, the good news is, he's like, when I do something wrong, you move on very quickly. He's like, the bad news is, Eliza, when you do something wrong, you move on yeah. very quickly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just like, I don't want to do, like, I'm sorry. And I, if I'm wrong, I'm sorry, but I don't, I actually love my husband. So like, I don't ever want to make him feel You don't want to learn too much? No, <laughs> I want to learn too much. It also just like, doesn't matter. You know, like the little things that you argue about, it's like, who cares? I I'm very defensive so that's fair and I'm like a scorekeeper and I'm like wait no no that's not fair that's, that's the comic not exactly you. fair right I want it exact Chappelle one time said I've never seen someone more obsessed with fairness than you I'm like no it's gotta be in in what like in a relationship relationships society unless it benefits me and then I it's perfect totally um <laughs> well yeah that's why human being um hello but like relationships, contribution, it's like, hey, you did your, I cooked, right. you did the dishes, like shit like that. I, you can't do that also, but that, what you're saying to me now, you're not the first person to like think that. Be like, oh, I bet your husband never, because I love this person, like my goal is always to be kind to that person. Yeah. And when we first started dating, he, I think he had some feedback or some some note about something. And he was like, I, you need to understand that I'm always on your side. And once you really click in with someone that like, they're not trying to get you or they're not trying yeah. to get anything. Like, so anything he says to me, I'm like, this is coming from a good place versus like Eliza, you did something bad. What are his notes for you? It's usually about like the way I put away a dish that he needed. Straight up. <laughs> like dishes? I cleaned out a pot yesterday and I saw it was back in the sink and I was like, I cleaned that. He's like, oh, there was crab juice on it. Cause his things are important because it's like a working kitchen. Right. So it's usually like a note about that or, I mean, he's such a like low maintenance guy. The guy owns like three shirts. Now that you tell me that you're like, let's move on. I also can see that. Yeah. Like I can't be bothered. Like, yeah, I don't want that. I don't want to get stuck on this. Like my career is crumbling. I don't have time to talk about like I was arguing about dinner. Is your career always crumbling? Is in that my mind. You? Yeah. Doesn't yours in your mind? Like if the phone doesn't ring all day, I'm like, well, I guess that's the death knell. Well, yeah. I mean, if I don't hear back from someone in an hour, I'm like, well, it was nice knowing them. Uh, that yeah. Goodbye relationship. My manager will be like, Eliza, it's been 48 hours. I'm like, takes two seconds to say yes. Did you not see the text? I've asked people to turn off their red, like when I see they've read their text. I don't, I'm like, can you turn that off? You have to have that off. No, who has Psychopath. red receipts on? No, I know like five people have them. I'm like, what are you are doing? Are they older? Because sometimes like my dad doesn't know his are on. Yeah, but then someone <laughs> specifically leaves them on so that they know. I mean, it could be used for power. How do you not know if you read something? No, no, no. They So that the other person knows. They That's, want you to know. It's a little psychopath. I bet I know who it is. It's the same person who's lying about their one person show. <laughs> um, all right. So what are your, <laughs> what do you, what fiefdom? Fiefdom, like. Everybody, for those who don't know what that is, like everybody wants their kingdom. Everybody right. wants to be the leader of their kingdom. And I was having a chat with a friend yesterday who's like one of those um, like VC, you know, very intelligent women that like mm -hmm. runs in these circles. And I think people start out to be inclusive, but I don't know if capitalism by nature is, capitalist ventures by nature are not inclusive things. And so I think about like- They're not democratic. And, and yeah, I would, and neither is like, showbiz yeah i guess i remember forever ago i there was this thing called the wing that uh -huh, had, the oh, woman's uh yeah the woman part of work. me was like i mean i i get why you're like i just want a space like or i can just be with girls or whatever um and i was just like oh what's this about and i went online and i looked at an application and it seems so ridiculous that i'm like reticent to say this because i'm like what if i misread this but i don't think i did and i one of the questions was like what have you done? Or like, how have you helped feminism? And I was just like, how can I burn this application? Like how fucking dare And you, you know what happened? Like the yes! head woman was a monster. And so I think people start out to like have this thing, but like absolute power corrupts absolutely. And Hollywood- 100% of the time. It's never, yeah. it never hasn't. It's undefeated. Yes. It's undefeated. So I guess just looking at that, it's always like, it's a place this is a group for women. We want women. And there's always something, and this happens with men too, but it's usually like in the vein of like sexual assault, but like something bubbles up. Everybody wants to like rule over their friends and have their thing and their aesthetic and do their thing. And I'm not like a fiefdom person. Like I- You're like a lone wolf. I'm a lone wolf with like my group of friends, but like, I don't feel the like, there's something about fiefdoms in general. It's just about like, no, this is the HBIC or like this is, you take, you'll take a meeting, um, 
uh, like let's say you're gonna do a project, you know, and you have to hear about like that celebrity. Well, he's really into this and this and he doesn't like this. And you're just like, I don't wanna live in your world. I only wanna live in my world, which is my own fiefdom, but still being a guest in someone else's Well, fiefdom. what you're saying, cause I'm on your side on this, yes. which is I approve this block. I'm Neil Brennan, I approve this block. Somebody asked me to open for him, like a great rock wanted me to open for him five years ago or Christopher something. Rock? Christopher Rock. And great friend and one of my, one of the greatest comedians that ever lived. Yeah. And I was like, no. And he's like, come on, man. And I was like, you want me to go out, I get a massage for 12 minutes and then you get a massage for an hour and a half. I was like, let me just stay home and get, you know what I mean? Like, it's just, I don't want, and he's like, yeah, you're right. He's like, he goes, I had a therapist one time say, no one wants to live on another person's schedule. No one wants to live on another person's schedule. No one wants to live on another person's uh, ethics. I mean, so if it's if I agree with him, let's do it. But right. if not, like, I don't want to. You're not his I don't want to be, not, I can't be a person's satellite at, I'm too old and I don't want to live in fear of someone. Not only that, you know, you're not on a payroll. I mean, you would have gotten paid for that in hugs and kisses maybe, but just especially when you have your own thing, you know, like when you're on someone else's schedule, he's running late or you're in a meeting. Well, he's really into space and cowboys. You're like, I don't fucking care. Yeah. I don't care what this person cares about because I care about my thing and I don't know why we're together. And I think a lot of times people are like, let's put these two comics together. It's like comedically, you and I could have different goals in a conversation. Your goal could be like you come in drunk and you love to like tell your dick jokes and I could be wanting to talk about something softer and like these things don't always go. Yeah. And I think you should force people to be in other people's fiefdoms on their schedules around their time. I don't know if this is a good block. No, 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 I, it is. Because you will admit you have like a fiefdom. A you're, I would argue that you're not trying to indoctrinate anybody. Right. You're like not going like, like maybe if you're opener, if you have an opener, you're like, hey, you need to get off at 15. There are certain things like, I'm not, this isn't like yeah. a culture. This isn't like specifically Eliza needs you to get off at 15. It's like, no, you're doing 15 minutes. Do fucking, don't job. run the light. Yeah. yeah. Like. I um, think a lot of times we see women that are like they want their group and it becomes like I, it's a not just women. Thing. No, it's not. Yeah. It's not. I'm just giving examples whether it's the good news is there's so many versions and so many brands over can find their thing. But it does feel like there's this and maybe that's because I'm a comic. Like if I remember I had a friend it was a couple and I was friends with them by by way of another friend and they were the best looking out of their whole friend group. And I remember mm -hmm. going over their house one time for dinner and I was like, this is by design that you guys are hot and you're friends with a bunch of uggos so you can feel better about yourself and they were successful and all the friends were like hoping the guy would do them a favor. Like everybody was like a little beneath them. Mm -hmm. And I was so skeeved out by it because I was like, you don't, you aren't friends with anyone who's better than you. You don't want to better yourselves. You just want to feel good about being around people that are lower than you. Yeah. On a Hollywood scale. And I always thought that was, I, I would love friends that are better than me. I would too. I can't find them. You are friends with Chris Rock. I know, but I don't think he's better than me. I'm kidding. <laughs> uh, um, uh, you don't. No, no I, no, I trust me. Product. Trust me. I've had we've had I've had long thoughts about this, and like it's it's like a place I've gotten to where it's like, all right, I have to be. You don't want to live in relation to somebody. I do have a question though, a, a possible hypocrisy that I don't know the answer to. Yeah. Meaning, when you did your show on Netflix, who wrote for it, and when you did your movie, who wrote it and directed it? I wrote my movie. Okay, by yourself? Yes. Okay, and then did you, and I'm not saying like you, I'm just saying like there was usually there's, no, I they'll be it. like right with this person. I wrote it, which is why there's only an A storyline. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, and who wrote for your TV show and what sort of culture do you think you had around it? My TV show, I was a writer on it and then there were like four other writers. Uh-huh. Uh, we had two guys, two girls. Um, we would come in at like 10. Hold for a pause. Well, we didn't have a bigger budget. We yeah, couldn't yeah. have like more writers, yeah. but I wrote a bunch of those skits as well. Yeah. We come in. The biggest question of the day was, where are we going to get lunch? Yeah. And of course you're writing for my voice, but like some, like one of those people like wrote on SNL. Like I just wanted people that were better than I was. And in fact, I chose my writer's packets blindly. Of all the ones submitted, I had the names taken off because yeah. I was like, I just want to pick based off how funny these things yeah. are. But 
and then they went home. Like I wasn't like anyone has to hang out with me. Like, I don't know. Good. No, I'm with you. I'm yeah. just, I'm like sort of means testing. I'm just I, going I wonder like, if, all right. If, if I also wrote this, um, there's this brand that's like a very girly brand. Right. And I ordered, I went in and I don't, I ordered some jeans and after several days of the jeans not arriving way past when they said they would, I got an email that was like, oops, looks like we sold you something that was out of stock. Mm. Your refund will come in like 10 to 12 business years. And here's a coupon for next time. And that cool girl like, oops, we didn't do our jobs. It's going to take a while to get your money back. Be cool. Be a clean girl. That just bothered me. And I was like, I don't like that girl. I don't like that girl vibe. I feel like you have double binds about feminism. Oh, yeah. And like you're a living double bind where you're like, women are oppressed and women have it worse than men. Yep. And I, I didn't say that. I no, just no, said, no, 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 no. Okay. I, whatever. Like I, I don't think you're, I, no one's going to say that whatever, there's no female oppression. If it, 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 Google, uh, Roe v. Wade. Um, <laughs> and, uh, but then you also are like, but I don't like this culture. I don't, and I don't I think, like this fake feminist culture. Because I think what's required is, Oh, you're a woman. That means you can't criticize anything. And it's like, no, that's bullshit. This, and I talk about this in my last special, these words that we use in this fourth wave feminism to appeal to women like, what up, rock star mama? Yeah, I'm yeah. like, just give me my fucking money back. Yeah. Now. Yeah. Because you sold me something that was bullshit. Yeah. Not like, hey, cool girl. Yeah. Nice middle yeah. part. Uh, <laughs> queen. Hey, queen. Queen. Work so mama. look about the pants. Listen. And by meanwhile, it's a bot. Meanwhile, you know that you're out of the pants. Don't make me feel like, hey, we're just trying to elevate you in this like tapered. It's pant a look. women. It's a women's business for women's. It's probably a Chinese dude. No, I mean, of co- that's the that's also like the fucking the one of the problems with any any of these movements is it's very hard to say. Eh, eh I don't I don't know. This is a bullshit movement. This part of it's bullshit because then you're condemning your anti-feminist or your racist or well, here's your, my block. Yeah. Cause I could go back and forth arguing these things all day. Like you could look at something like goop and everybody rolls their eyes, right? Because of whatever. But I would argue, you know, at the end of the day, if you make a lot of money, don't you want an elevated experience? So let her sell women $400 lotions. Not everything can be like a target rummage sale. People hate the rich, but then when they become rich, they're like, well, I'm loving this. And so all of this this language that's so fraught and people are so angry and they're always on their Instagrams talking, you know, about how fucked up everything is. It's like fucking wish you had that much money. Well, everyone and people go money doesn't buy happiness. And everyone goes, let me check. Sure makes it a lot easier. Yeah. Let me just make sure that this is true. I believe you, but I just have to see for myself. You have conflict with movements and then you have conflict about your conflict and then you have conflict about your conflict about your conflict. Like yes. I, you're and you, you the thing I like about your act is like you are kind of open about it and it yeah. does make you a target for easy criticism of like anti-feminist or whatever. There's just certain things now where it's pub there's a public movement and then people go and if you go ah too soon if you do it too soon right then people have an issue like all that like yes girl rock star mama queen all the stuff that they stole from black and gay and trans drag queens <laughs> forever ago at the time everyone was like this is the way to talk and i always hated it yeah and enough time has gone by now that that's the popular opinion like ugh don't uh, talk yeah, don't yeah, say yeah. unicorn tears and it's like but you all participated in it yeah, yeah, yeah. that is the burden of being a comic is that you, you call bullshit ahead of time. Yes. And you're if you're ahead of the curve, then people are like, oh, you're a heretic. Burn that person. Yeah. And you're like, mm, you'll see I'm right. Do you ever see Steve Harvey on Comedians in Cars? He goes, him and Simon are talking about, like, when there's a tragedy. Steve Harvey goes, we have the joke within five minutes of the tragedy. <laughs> Not He's say. like, we just can't say it. Yet. Oh, no. Uh, but so, but there are lots of these movements where you, and then corporations go, we stand with X group and you go. What are you talking about? Somebody made a fucking excellent like Instagram video where it was like uh, Black Lives Matter. Stop Asian hate. Mm-hmm. The Indigenous Lives Matter. And he goes, now this sounds like all lives matter. 
Oh, that's funny. And it was like, fuck, I don't mean all like it. You can't. But no one can say, is that a huge problem? Because everything is happening at real time at a billion miles an hour. You are subjected to the scrutiny of whomever is looking in that moment. And Correct. if they're having a bad day and they are like, I don't like Neil and this matches up with this agenda. Yes. That's then it it becomes and corporations volatile. can't say, I don't know. Asian hate isn't that big an issue for us. They have the ability to make a choice like with Bud Light. They're like, no, we're going to support this trans person and, and fuck you. But they never ha they can't ever go the other way and be like, well, they can. They can just they be quiet. Can, they can just not. Can that's no. what the thing It's like, what? Who fucking needed? How greedy and stupid are you that you're like, we should get the tr we need to break into the trans market. You fucking idiots. They're not going to drink Bud Light. I bet they I mean, or they are. I think it's more about no, the well, gesture. Now they have to. That you have to. It's all your. You have to drink bad beer too. Yeah. You have to join a frat because of all what they did for you. Um. So yeah. I so say I'm, swing that pendulum and then just let it come back. So to how do have, do you have any uh checks on your own fiefdom? I also have noticed the thing where people think if I say I hate fiefdoms, that means I don't have one. Exactly right. And and that's I don't I don't know that I'm uh famous enough to truly have one. You know I think my fan base is. I don't, but I don't think it's fan. I think it's a matter of like people who work for you. Like I don't, oh. you know, Bill Burr doesn't have an assistant. And I heard that, and I was like, I don't have an assistant. People are like, you don't have an assistant. I'm like, I don't want someone around all the time. I have Burr does that when he's way busier than I am. I and, and I'm like, that's good. shocking he, to me. He's the same because it's some Catholic shit where we just to me it's like constantly have people watching us. Well, my assistant, I don't make her come in all the time. No, I'm actually hyper cognizant of it because I'm always like. I'll text you if I need you to come in, but you can work remotely. Like, who wouldn't want that job? Yeah. I also never want a young girl to feel bad working for me. So I'm like, perks are you get all this free shit. The worst part is you got to pick me up from the airport. Yeah. So if there's any indoctrination is that you must learn that you have to get me from the airport. Other than that. But you pay them. Of course. But it's still. In merch. In old merch. In that old merch. Um, Do you right. want to hear the one that I thought of on the way here? Yeah, Do, please. Did I write something else? No, uh, no there's more. Okay. But what did you think of the way here? I don't know if it's competitive. It's like I cannot watch anything that I read for or oh, have a that, okay. If you've auditioned for something, I and didn't get it. You that project is an enemy for life. I can't watch it. I can't watch it. And so, like, I can't watch The Mandalorian. <laughs> I couldn't watch Babylon. I couldn't like. I have read for so many major comedy, like motion pictures, and so many TV shows. Some of them not even comedies, and. Granted, there's not enough hours in the day, but like I, could, I couldn't watch Miss Maisel and I finally watched it. I'm like, the show is so good. Did you watch all of it? No, my mom was visiting and she was like, come in, we're watching Miss Maisel. And then I I half watched and half let her explain. So any old episode was good to you? I just happened to come in. What, it wasn't the, the first episode? No. Okay. But like I knew it was going on and it was so good. But I think, you know, this career, it's so, there's so much rejection, especially if you act as well. And constantly pitching shows and it always like breaks my heart a little and people are like, when are you going to do more movies? And you're like, I am trying. We're talking like 12 page auditions, like trying so hard and then to not get it. Like it's not personal, but at the same time, I think of Michael Scott, like it's business. It's the most personal thing there is. Like, yeah, it's hard for me not to attach. Like they oh. wouldn't speaking of which I wasn't allowed to direct an episode of The Office. Me neither. No, I didn't. Why? I wasn't a lot. Uh, I believe it's because I hadn't watched it enough. Oh. It was like the second season or something. Okay. Oh, wow. And I hadn't watched it enough. My buddy Mike Schur was one of like the yeah, yeah. head people. Yeah. And I just said something in the meeting that was like the worst thing I could have said. Yeah. But I got a list of those. I literally have a list of like scrubs. No, thank I just done Chappelle show. Right. No, thank you. Like, I can't no, thank you. And you're like, why? No, thank you. No, thank you. No, thank you. And you, just you got, can't help but take it personally. They're my. It's a. It's a. It's a blood libel. It's a. It's a, it's not a blood libel. It's a. It, they're my enemies for life. Right. Thank like, you. If you reject me, I and I. Now here's my defense of because it's I have the same block, which is like vendetta based on hurt. Mm. Right. So if I'm like, I'm not fucking watching The Office. Like now I'm not going to because they okay. reject it. The right, fucked right, right. up thing is like we have personal relationships with these project, these projects, like these, like hey, and it's like no, I know that thing. That thing hurt my feelings. Yes. Are we being idiots, 
or are we is it self-care i don't know and i think it depends on the project mm -hmm. and like i'm not watching the mandalorian but that has nothing to, it has less to do with me not getting it and more to do with like it's just not yeah. the thing that i watch and i'm i don't think they need me but there's enough rejection and sometimes you get things through but there's enough rejection that you you're just like, why do I want to watch the the group have fun without me? And I could have been good at that. And I don't know why it's I didn't get It's a party you didn't get invited to. It's, why it would a, I stand at the window? Do you want to come to the premiere? Like, no, that feels really shitty. And it does feel like, because there is so much to consume out there in terms of media, it does feel more and more like homework. Like the amount of times you're like, I got to watch this thing because everyone said it was good. And you're not having fun. I do watch The Office every night before I go to bed. Sure. So if you need me to direct an episode. <laughs> so that's, difficult because I find myself closing myself off to information in terms of self-preservation. Like when I met my husband, I think we watched Frasier every night for like three years. And there were great things happening on TV, but when you feel so left out consistently and all you have is stand-up, and not to say that isn't great, but like it's not, they're not connected. It's not like you're a great stand-up, therefore you're going to be an incredible movie star it just starts to hurt. That's the honest yeah. truth. And I mean, what I've learned or come to with all these things is like, you know, there's an old, there's like a 12 step program saying, which is rejection is God's protection. Take it or leave it. But you just, I, I've come to the place of like, I wasn't supposed to direct the office. I wasn't supposed to direct Parks and Rec. I Birds I view years later. Yeah, of course. But and then the ones I did direct, like I directed a New Girl episode. I directed a right. Mindy episode. It's like, it didn't, it was just like grist for the mill. It wasn't right. nothing. It wasn't riveting in any way. Right. I wasn't a great Emmy. fit. Right. They, it's, so you go like, you'll end up getting and doing the right things. A hundred percent. Ultimately. That is the holistic view and that's the healthy way to do it. But it wasn't, I didn't get here drinking smoothies. Yeah. It wasn't healthy. I was drinking fucking bile my, i was drinking my own bile of like negativity and it, it, I mean, causticness it's a, it has taken years for me to like not get angry not call and yell like and just realize as bad as this feels it's gonna feel better soon and that just takes practice because you get rejected from things you know i had a casting director come up to me once i was at something else and i was like oh how did and i knew the movie and it was a big movie and i was like oh i i hope that when they cast someone who it didn't make any sense. And this person to this day, I'm like, what the fuck was that? Yeah. And he comes, this cast member comes up to me and he just goes, I was like, how'd it go? He goes, it should have been you. And I was like, what? And he's like, I don't know what happened. I don't know why the director, it should have been you. And you were my pick. And I'm like, don't tell me that. I, <laughs> I'm happy with that. I would take that. That's now better, we know what to me, that's better than nothing. That's better than a locked box. It also kind of doesn't matter. Because then of it's like, of course it doesn't matter, but and you'll never know the reason. I guess coming out the, I mean, part of it is like, oh, you'll get the thing you're gonna get, and then at a certain point you're like, okay, but I'm forty now, so when is I gonna? No, yeah, <laughs> but what do you make of how you thought your life was gonna go, and yeah. how it went? Well, I guess I didn't have any thoughts on how it was gonna go, and that's the tough thing. I'm supposed to have these answers, like I knew I was gonna do this, this, and this, and. I always had these specific ambitions. It's, I just thought I would be funny for a living. And I don't even know that when I was younger, it was necessarily stand up. Of course, we all wanted to be on Saturday Night Live when mm -hmm. you're little, because that's what was available. That was the, yeah. the go-to thing. And it's a great show. Yeah. And you know, you're a kid in Dallas, Texas. You're like, I'm gonna be on SNL because, yeah. or in Living Color. And so the goal was all, there was never, I didn't know about the comedy store, the improv, or writer's rooms, or any of this stuff when I got to LA. I just knew I was funny, and I knew that the people that I that I was friends with weren't gonna support that, and I was gonna do it regardless. Like, I wasn't gonna like wait for some yeah. validation. And I just started doing stand-up, and I have to be honest, all of that rejection, I would just go to the clubs, and I would just do my stand-up. And yeah. so, here we are with that, and thank God, would it be great to be successful in doing other things? But like, what's so great about Santa was like, you don't need anybody's permission aside from the audience. Yes. And what I would also say is Richard Pryor is not remembered for his movies. Not the toy. 
not the toy, not stir crazy. In Living Color on the first episode did a sketch about Richard Pryor movies and it was it was a parody of Richard Pryor movies called Scared for No Reason. <laughs> <laughs> which is just like it uh, you know w some people some comedians have had great shows great movies but to me and this is just my own personal like carlin didn't do anything right like like i still think public oration is the coolest fucking thing in the world and as somebody who like made a tv show and movie yeah. like i know i've done all that other shit it's still the cool to me the coolest thing it's the most instantly gratifying at its core, like everybody wants to be a stand-up comic. Mm -hmm. Everybody. Yeah. And when I do get parts on awesome projects, you know, you're sitting around waiting in your trailer five hours in, you're like, why am I this doing this? This is the worst, yes. This is the worst. And I had 5,000 people screaming for me last yes. night. And now I'm in line for free tater tots. Yeah. So it is this weird, like it doesn't necessarily translate. And I obviously continue to like do those projects because I like to exercise those parts of my mind. But just in terms of the block, I have to push myself to watch things. And I'm normally happy that I did it because the burn of being excluded from things, cool kids clubs, projects, things in general, like it's still fresh. And it's, it was just it was for so many years. How many people did you reject for your movie? Hundreds. No. Like you, we asked Ryan Hansen. Like, no, 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 no. You would people auditioned? We gave the parts. Okay. I called Margaret Cho and I was like, we wrote this for you. We didn't have a big budget. Like we weren't going to get like Chris Hem Hemsworth. No, no, or no but I you just know? thought you auditioned people to play stuff. Didn't Maybe you? for a couple of really minor parts, but we really, I will say this because I know how shitty auditioning is and I get so frustrated when people are weirdly precious. I'm like, it's a line. Give it to me. Give it to me. I, I can be trusted with comedic integrity for hours at a time oh. on a stage. Oh, and so we totally. gave them. Kimmy Gatewood was the director. She gave a chunk of parts to her friends, and I gave like Jody Miller. I gave her the bartender, but there were a lot of small yeah. parts. We gave them to people. Yeah, because I'm like, I'm not going to make you drive somewhere and read for this when I know you can do this, and it ultimately doesn't matter. Yeah. Yeah. Also, I don't know if anyone great would read. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, no, no we how gave about them. the TV show? But what I was saying oh, is like show? you've rejected people. Sure. And it's not, it's just like, I don't know, it just wasn't. So you take it ultimately this, and from the other side, it's just like, I uh, just yeah. wasn't how I imagined it. Well, that was an exercise, being on the other end. You're like, oh, wow, some people you think would be great. And then on camera, it's like, that was terrible. I guess the for me, the mind fuck is being asked consistently to audition at a high level, but then I rarely get it. And so it hurts because you're like, I... I got I got a coach for this. I I did twelve pages. I did it when you wanted it, and every actor feels this way. This is not specific to me, but it's like, yeah, you'll pardon me if I don't watch your HBO Max series that like cost me like seventy two hours of my life. Yeah, that I was never gonna get because you gave it to a dude. <laughs> um. Yeah. I that again. I am absolutely on your side with that because I. And I reject people all the time. We but, all do. Yeah, sure. But, you reject people all the time. But at the same time. And if those people don't want to watch the thing, I salute you, sir. Totally. Like, I get it. Yep, I wouldn't either. The thing that you and I might have in common, because you said this earlier, like, if you made me feel, if you reject me for a part, it, they could still really love you and you just weren't right yeah. for that. And I do get that. But if I've met you and you've made me feel bad, and I know no one can make you feel bad. Sure they can. Or you've done something really shitty, I never forget. <laughs> and I will never, ever tell anyone that I think that about someone, but I will never, ever do you a favor. I never forget the way somebody made me feel. Well, that's the thing. That's a, when you say you never tell anyone. You ever get asked for a recommendation and you're like, hmm. You're like, they go, hey, this loaded gun. Do you want to shoot this person? Do you want to spare this person or shoot him in the head? And you're like, ah, happened to me yesterday. Somebody called about, somebody texted me about somebody. And I was like, hey, was that something? And I was like, mm. So I texted somebody else. I was like, what did I think of this person? Because mm. I was like, I remember what I think I thought. But then 
And she actually. She's like, you love, you married she was, them. He, she for- was like, they were more helpful than you may remember. I am rarely. But it's in a- certainly like. I'm rarely in a position where it's like, I'm the head of the studio and I'm going to make or break that. It's less that and more like if I have something to give out, I'm like, you're like, I'm not, I wouldn't. My whole thing, my whole career has never, has always been like, I'm not going to do anything to negatively impact you specifically, but I'm not going to help either. Mm -hmm. If you did something to, to my friend, like I'm a very loyal person. If I know something bad about you, there are ways, this is why people get called fake in Hollywood. Because everyone's like, love them, love them. Because that person could be someone you need the next day. So there's yeah. no point in being vocal about it. But I've been on calls where like a name has come up and you're just like, oh, okay, cool. Do you guys have any any other suggestions? And you just move right past yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, People don't realize, you know, you put your best forward and you, some people are dicks, some people are not, whatever. It's, people don't realize like your actions impact people. And people remember these things. And I think some people get off on being mean or shitty. And I'm just like a very quiet observer of character. And I don't believe, I'm not fake. I won't be friends with someone just because they have money or power. Maybe that's why I have like a, such a small circle. But a huge block for me is participating in that. And I know that that's like a big part of the game. But like Participating with people that you know are mm-hmm. not great people. Love them. It's like, I, I know he rape someone you're just like no good guy she's great it's like this person like did all these bad things or makes other people feel like no it's great because everybody wants to get ahead and thank god for stand-up because i don't have to do that like i don't have to bring someone on tour that i don't like i don't have to work with anyone yeah that i don't enjoy the vibration of yeah people have like a really low vibration that's how they tell me i don't Oh, uh, this is funny. I can't get over and continue to be blown away by how bad, cheap, and crappy everything we eat is. You know what? Your husband's what? a chef. My husband's a chef. Okay. We so we talk about this a lot, and you're vegan, right? Yeah. So you must have an inkling. You must know this because you're not a vegan just for funsies. It's pretty fun. Really? <laughs> no. It's fun being invited nowhere. I'm vegan because I the meat industry is so disgusting. Mm. And I, it's awful for people. It's all like, it's bad. It's a greenhouse gas emitter. And I'm like, I don't. Also, meat, I learned, is a sauce delivery system. So sauce oh, oh, sauce okay. is what you're tasting. You just eat a jar of sauce. I In a big wooden spoon. Ah, and I force it every time. Just it's like, hard. No, no. It, I rip the edges of my mouth. It's fucking so gross good. and pretty graphic. Um, but also, it's behind the paywall. The, this is sponsored by Regu. <laughs> so... I just yeah so yeah if you do any cursory research yeah you'll just go oh I can't if you're on the fence about eating meat watch a movie called Earthlings and cancel all your Morton's reservations because you're just gonna I watched it I remember telling somebody I go yeah I watched the movie and I'm vegan they go Earthlings and I go yep I have nightmares almost every night and uh I don't even know if I have dreams anymore I've never had a sweet dream I don't even know what they're talking about. You called about. it a sweet dream. <laughs> Whatever. Be a sweet so dream. I'm like, what are you talking? I told Keenan Thompson, I dream about Lauren Michaels being mad at me four or five nights a week. And it's been happening for 20 years. Oh my God. I know okay. the guy a little. He's never, he respects me, he likes me, but it's just a simple work power metaphor. Maybe this is your fantasy. Like you live in that frustration. Which one? That, that Lauren's mad that at me? That he knows who you are. No, that he's mm-hmm. mad at you. That you've worked enough together that he's mad at you. Yeah, but it's not. I'm always at SNL and he's mad at me. And I, it's before, I've worked at SNL three weeks. Do you ever have the dream that you can't get to class? Yeah, but it's not class. It's it's to meet Lauren. It's SNL. <laughs> I swear to God. <laughs> it's, already wrong. it's crazy. Right. I, I mean, everybody knows I don't eat a ton of meat. And not ton of, but I don't eat a ton of meat. I try, choose to do it sustainably less often. We're not big meat eaters anyway. Just, I guess when I said that, it was more just like bread has sugar in it. Mm -hmm. All of your health snacks are like the equivalent of eating a candy bar. Granola bar is so high in sugar. So high in sugar. Yeah, if you you look at the, just don't, if you look at a label, you're like, like, fuck. Everything's sugar. And then the other side is like, it's just wrapped in plastic. It's like nature's intent. Like all of these bars 
are just crap. Everyone, everything is filled with sugar because it sells and it makes things palatable. It makes them tasty. Or stevia, which I can taste now. Mm -hmm. Like zero sugar, like, but it's got stevia. Everything is cheap and bad for you. And I'm not even just talking, there's food, but the products, everything's made in like a mercury mill in China. Everything is cheap. Everything is just crappy and marketed beautifully. And to want more is to have to spend so much more and then you feel like you're in a rat race just to get those things. And so I find myself just consuming less things because everything feels like it's broken, half promises, bullshit. Like, Well, people go, it's sustainable uh, denim. And you just go, there's no such thing. If You know what's sustainable? Buy nothing. Buy nothing. That's the only thing that's ecological. Buy nothing. And it's, it's I'm not perfect about it like I bought these jeans recently I don't buy well, they're clothes ethical. go ahead what they're ethical jeans and they look great the fast fashion of it all but you can't have these conversations without people like well what if you can't afford it don't food shame this is not about that and that what that that what about ism that sophistry is what is killing everything and I am just like blown away, even like health and wellness products. Like I got offered vitamins the other day and there were three grams of sugar, 20 calories per vitamin. Postnatal vitamins. Why? I ordered a Starbucks. Why? I'm, usually I take caffeine pill. Better? Do you? Yeah. A suppository? Oh yeah. No, <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. no regular, regular. And uh, and like sometimes I order coffee. There's there were 13 grams in oat milk of sugar right. in fucking oat this much oat milk. Yeah. 13 grams. And you're like, why is why? there fucking sugar? I in don't my need. Oats. Yeah, like it's oats. How how the sugar even get near oats? They're deciding it for you. They're yeah, sugar and ketchup. Yeah, it's, it's uh, spaghetti sauce. The and red sauce is like what you Tomato eat by sauce. the spoonful. Yeah, yeah, and then. The, like it is so overwhelming. And so you're just trying to make these informed, healthy decisions. And it's just so incredibly difficult. Everything is just crappy. And even if you buy something expensive, like secretly there's a ton of sugar or weird ingredients. And it's just, it's overwhelming how much crap we're endlessly producing mm -hmm. under the guise of sustainability, greenwashing. And it's sad and it's That's scary. That's when they pretend to that it's healthy. If they don't pretend it's healthy, it's so unhealthy you can't believe it. There's that, like a stackable burger. Somebody was telling me they were pre-diabetic that was like, I was like, what? It was somebody I knew, like- Wasn't everyone pre-diabetic until you get diabetes? Who wasn't obese or, and, and they were like, yeah, I went in and my, and I was like, how are you? It was like a healthy looking person told me that they were pre-diabetic. What does that mean? Like you have a proclivity You're, for diabetes? Like a friend of mine was pre-diabetic and- like you're gonna have diabetes if you don't okay. stop this to the point where your vision you just go blind oh, for geez. a little bit yeah my friend was on a plane blind for a little bit and he was like i gotta and that's what killed patrice o'neill mm -hmm. literally that's what killed sugar and like i love sugar i didn't Sh realize it until i did a podcast recently what a huge role sugar has played in my life by the grace of god i have a good metabolism but like there isn't, and I don't want to stop my addiction to it. I like craving it. I like satisfying that craving. Uh, three days and you'll be over it. For real. There's a three day I heard window. It was like two weeks. Uh, in my mouth, it's three days. <laughs> in For my real. mouth, it's three days. In my mouth, where I'm from. But, anyways, so it's that. It's uh, seeking out quality, whether it's healthcare or beauty products or clothing, and just constantly coming up against a wall of like paying more for a consistently mediocre subpar and product. And it's not doing the thing it said it's doing. Yeah, you can't drink your collagen. Adaptogens, not in your grape drink. Like people oh. want all of these buzzwords. Yeah. And it's like, you're gonna get older and you gotta wear sunscreen. Yeah. And a lot of this is genetics and people are making so much money off of it. And maybe it's just because I'm getting older. I just get so tired of the buzzwords. Well, the amount of shit you have to slather on is just like, okay. Yeah. What, what what are we doing? What, like biome defender, like it's all this yeah. stuff. And like it's you all... think they're selling it in a soda. Yeah. It's that many ingredients. Yeah. And an adapted, what are you even talking? What are we talking make, about? Well, also, you know what I wanted to, what's, the, what are the toxins? What are they? Show me the toxins. And they go, it's lactic acid. Okay, the lactic acid's in your muscles. You need it. And you need some of it. Yeah. And like, 
And also the stomach, you don't need to do a cleanse. The whole thing, gravity does it That's for you. That's what your organs are for. That's yes, what your kidneys are for. The whole thing goes down. You, you know your asshole? That's where it all comes Hopefully out. Hopefully it's That's working. That's what is happening. Yeah. These are your spleen and your kidney and your adrenals. Like these things are designed to do that. And everybody just wants something that they can eat to make them thinner. And they want beauty. They want to put on chemicals that will make them more beautiful. And I think there's like a trade-off. And it's just, it's so frustrating because I buy into it sometimes. And you're like, okay, this seems clean or this seems well, that. Well, you start to feel like a crazy person if you don't. And if you talk about it too much, people are like, yeah, yeah, hippie. Yeah. Take it. Like I put on concealer to come here. Uh, it was like old and it had like crumbs in it on the bottom of my bag. Of course not. It was like garbage. You, yeah, you have to regularize like, yourself. Like, oh, it wasn't even good concealer. I'm just a cool girl. Yeah. It wasn't. I'll show it to you after this. Um, but it it just, then you get so tired and you're like, you know what? I'll just use a brand that I already know. Like, it's so overwhelming and everything's become so Did expensive. It, there's a woman named Gia Tolentino who writes for The New Yorker and wrote a book called Trick Mirror that you would like. She writes a lot of, about the shit you are interested in. And she also wrote a thing about like, trying to uh get out of the amazon mm -hmm. ecosphere like try to order something not on amazon oh she's like sustainable no box like it's you're it, it's gonna take three weeks so it's like just pick and you your gotta poison. drive there yes pick so your what are poison we offsetting? Pick, yes that's ex we always talk about in my house like you're gonna hurt yourself or the planet the question is what part do you want to hurt so you can get a hybrid, but that battery runs on cobalt yes. and they mine that in the Congo. Like, yep. And yes. so it's like more like, OK, can you do something for your community? Can you do something to feel good? And eventually you get so tired. It's just a lot. And I think it's like a signal of the demise of our society. And I don't what I was thinking as you were saying this is AI come and end this. Artificial please intelligence. identify that you're an AI first. AI, AI. It's me. AI come end this madness. Put us out of our misery. We couldn't do it. We tried. We couldn't do it. We got too. We got too lit. Shit got shit too, was too lit. <laughs> shit, you're young. You get it. You understand when shit gets too lit. Consumerism got too fucking crunk. How is that? Do people still say crunk? No, they um, don't. But I will tell you, our obsession. You know, like we're at, like at the Romans at the height of their empire. Like our obsession with consuming everything from like sheen hauls on TikTok to this keeping up with the Joneses. I'm trying to just not buy shit. Like I just like I just wear these. I got three pairs of these. I wear them. These I bought four pairs of Lululemon pants. Hopefully I'll never have to buy another pair. They're just black. They're they're gonna last. Capsule wardrobe. Yep. But you ever drive past the mall and feel lonely because you don't need anything? No, that's happened to me all the time where I'll be like, I used to need to go in there. And now it's just another place. It's like, I'm like, no, it's just another thing. It doesn't work. I went with a girlfriend yesterday and our because we were going to spend some time. We had like a, a day off. And I was like, you know what? Let's get drinks and get a little buzzed and go shopping. Mm -hmm. I don't remember the last time I did that. We go to this mall. We nailed getting the drink. That was no problem. I walked through this entire mall of luxury shops. And at the end of the day, I came out with one pot of lotion from Lush and it was like a charity lotion that like goes to whatever. It was the only thing I bought. The more alcohol I consumed, the more disgusted I became. <laughs> That's with all rare. of the things. Yeah. I know cuz I was like sell me something. Yeah. The experiences weren't nice. Like nothing felt worthy. I just bought a car. I drove I won a Honda Civic on Last Comic Standing and I drove that car for over a decade. Great. And then I gave it to a friend. And then the friends. With well, the license plate was winner, right? <laughs> Number one woman. Uh, I gave that car up because I was going to have my daughter. And I wanted a safe car, so I got a Volvo. Because I was like, it's a nice car, but it's understated. Mm -hmm. And it was a lemon. So I went through a whole thing. I had to get them to buy it back. Great. That was a nightmare. My whole point is driving cars, driving cars. And ethically, I'm like, it's got to be a hybrid or made in America. Like, it's got to be something. It was such a nightmare at the end of the day. I just got a Kia. Yeah, you go like, just give me fucking, just, I don't want to wait. Just give me the fucking thing. Today's the first day I drove it here. I was like so nervous, but like there, I felt like the flex is not participating. I was like, I'm not going to drive. That's all, that's all you can do with, it's like living as off the grid as you can on the grid. Yes. Try. You're going to lose. Yes, the you're going to lose. The thing is losing. like, I, I, I had the thought this weekend is like, we all want to be good people. We all, I believe like in our essences, we want to be good people. 
but our preset, our factory settings are just for like stupidity and garbage. And yeah. you just have to and you're find Catholic, it. So you come with a lot. There's a, a lot of ton presets. of it. So, so our, like, we don't want to do the, we're not predetermined. Like you said, you can't believe when people flick cigarettes on the floor. I can't believe that. I people still totally do that. agree. But be, it's because our we're preset to fucking. <laughs> or no, that's learned. That's I learned. Don't think it you is... saw a, a Jim, James Dean did it. You saw people in movies do it, and then yeah, you have learned. you ever smoked? Never had a cigarette. You in my don't life. know what to do with it. Put it so out you in your got... fucking eye. Quit putting it in the oceans. You think I care? Yeah, if I agree. Yourself... But like, people lit litter used to be a huge problem, yes, and you're it's not right. because it's learned. It's just because you go ah, fuck it. I'm here in a car that's moving. If I do this, I'm going to forget it and I'm not there anymore. No, we know better. Fuck I, don't, I can agree with you on a lot of other things being preset. That one is just willful, just ignorance. Uh, You're not ignorance. a dropper no. at your house? I heard a story where you, uh, someone had to clean your pot twice. My what? The pot that you didn't, you got crab juice on the pot <sighs> and you didn't do it right. I cleaned it though. I didn't but drop it. I thought I didn't do it well enough. But no, that's not what you're arguing. I I'm did a arguing good job. that uh, people have different uh, standards of drop behavior it. around cleanliness. Yours is one. Your husband's another one. I clean that pot, but crab juice sticks. Sustainable crab juice sticks. And that's the other thing. As we're talking about this, I'm just like, like, like my eyes are going like shark black, thinking of all the like. Wait, I saw that you did this or took this plane or did this. It's like. It's we're not, trapped. We are trapped. We're trapped. We're trapped in we're trapped. a system. If we can't do capitalism and do good ecology, you can't do. They're completely diametrically opposed. Actually, da, da, you say that now. In two years, they're going to go study. Yes. Recycling doesn't work. And no, you're like, you know, Fuck. In two years. Our city doesn't recycle. So yes. don't bother. Yeah. You have to either have so much money to live sustainably or just be very poor and you're already doing it, which is you have joke. You don't even have to have so much money. You have to, do you ever look up like earth homes? You open a flap and the wind comes and that heats it and the water comes off the roof and you can do it. It's just kind of like a recumbent bicycle. Like, right, you're like, you can do it's gonna it. It's going to look really It's just fucking bad. dorky as yes. shit. And inconvenient. And so I guess I'm in awe of how shitty this isn't to say I'm not grateful and I don't like love people or whatever, but in awe of how shitty everything is, has become and how fast, how quickly it's all getting even worse. Every climate prediction has arrived faster than they thought. Yeah. Every bad climate outcome has gotten here five to 10 years early. And I'm sorry, like, then I look at the fact that I got married five years ago and I had a balloon sculpture because at the time it wasn't on my radar right. that it was like that those things were bad. And so I can't be angry at everyone because it's like, well, what about the thing I didn't know? But now that I know, I'm angry that right. more people don't but know. But if you do it right, it's you and your husband in a room just staring at each other. <laughs> Which is our sex life. <laughs> right. No touching. Right. Huh? No touching. Just no, staring. of course not. No, but that's what it comes down to. It just comes down to like, if you want to do things ecologically... It's so inconvenient and weird to people that the tax it takes on you socially is going to kill you 10 years early. Again, which is good for the environment. Look what they did to the vegans. Like it was the Tell biggest joke. Tree huggers. Like it was seen as this like lame, unmasculine, annoying thing. And now people are like, oh, I understand why you'd be vegan. But for years it was like people hated people they who still didn't want to hurt animals. Real, you can still get a laugh on vegans. You can For still sure. get a laugh on vegans being pussies or whatever. Right. The fact that people were against Impossible Burgers in just by like, Recently, yeah. no, I don't like it. Like, dude, you think that your cow is doing, living any natural life? The, maybe the shit you eat is. Right. Because you it costs $17 a pound. Right. But no. like <laughs> most people's burgers are less like hoof are, meat are, and they're shot full of fucking yeah. steroids and anti anti-anxiety no anti yes uh, probably yeah, like just garb it's they're it's garbage protein but i'm with you and if you think about it the what you end up with is like let me just get the well you become so inundated that you're like i just need it's overwhelming you're flooded and you go i got i think i i have a joke about it. i'm like i'm just gonna smoke so we can go back to bed like that's you go like you I gotta do? I gotta I gotta and then you're like because hey, nobody wants to hear you talk about it and then the truth is in the immediate future you go outside the sun is shining 
like things don't seem that bad and it's all relative, but it is, it's frustrating because you want to care and you want to do more, but society will silence you very quickly and people will stop listening if you beat your drum too hard over the same thing over right. and over. Which goes, to, it's a, it's a version of your feminism thing, which is like, you have to like, well, how's your messaging? Right. I didn't do it because I didn't like their their mess. It's like motherfucker. I'm trying to just save the like just trying to do something like just trying to be a decent person. Well, I think. Well, I didn't like the way you said. I didn't like the way you approach it. We did yeah. female CEOs for that. It's like I didn't like her vibe, but her emails. <laughs> and you're just like, how do we get? How do we sugarcoat this enough to make you just fucking eat it? They they fucked up all of like all, all they they overexpanded with Beyond Meat and Impossible Burgers and whatever and the, now the question whatever. is how much pea protein do you really need to eat? How much any protein do you really need to eat? Like the the bottom line, not is as not much a lot. as they tell you. Of course not. America, everything's like packed with eighteen grams of protein. Like you don't need that you don't much. Need no, you're not for the day. Bulking. You need I don't know what it is, but it's like, it's like way over. It's way less that's in like a Snickers. <laughs> yeah, um, look. What makes you feel lonely? Because you describe yourself as sensitive, yet most of your, uh, it all reads as ideological. My stand up? Kind of. And even the stuff we've been talking about is more like ideological in terms of like systems and isms and you know what I mean? Like it's not like, or I guess the thing about rejection hurting, but I'm, yeah, I'm just, I guess I'm just wondering like, is there anything? Like, what's the sat two or three saddest moments of your life? I don't often think about my childhood. Even though it was a happy one, something about it, I'm a very, like, what's next kind of person. I have a lot of energy. Do you so, have ADD or something? I don't, I am so over the overdiagnosis yeah, yeah. of that. Anybody who doesn't read a full dictionary in one sitting has ADD. And when you're a kid in the 90s, like they've got ADD. I'm like, oh, hot take. Um, algebra's boring. So I don't know that I have it as an adult. I think I don't want to, especially being in comedy, I don't have to pay attention to anything I don't like. Um, I will say social media has depleted my ability to like fully pay attention. Mm -hmm. mm. Um, when do I feel lonely? Often. Because... You know, you spend your career putting things out there to make people feel good, obviously in an attempt to validate your own thoughts, at least for me. Yep. I think for so much of my career, I was so isolated. Being a headliner is a very isolating thing, especially when you're up and coming. So you don't have, you couldn't afford, or I didn't have a feature act for so long. So you're yeah. just traveling by yourself. And I know you have, you know this feeling. And you're in transit. Um, and I have to be honest, when I was coming up so we'll say like 2008 I became a headliner up until maybe I don't know I don't even know it was an extremely like there weren't a ton of other women doing it and if there were they were working or they were already famous so there was no like welcome club right there's there no isn't. there's no sorority there's no and it's not a knock yeah. against women like you're doing your own shit yeah. like whatever and there's no there's no one to know because you come to the comedy store. Most of those guys were degenerates, mm -hmm. bad vibe anyway, or jealous. Mm -hmm. And so for so many years, I just kind of like kept my head down and just there was such I felt like a competitiveness with me, even though I was just like a girl just figuring out how to do stand up and people were just like shitty. And so then that becomes like an armor and then you do your thing and then you kind of want to talk to people. And it has taken me years to realize like that's not on me. And also I'm not a shitty person. Like the biggest knock is like, oh, I met Eliza and like she didn't remember who I was or I met her and she didn't smile or something like bullshit stuff that only men. I've heard she with. made me hold her dog. No, you got to hold my dog. <laughs> Eliza. <laughs> you got to hold Blanche. Have you ever held her? No, I feel like you're one of the ones that didn't want to do it. <laughs> She, she was People so... People don't want to hold a dog everybody for someone else. wanted to hold Blanche. I wouldn't do it with Tianfu because she's like not cool about it. Okay. She was a meaty little thing. And I never, when I asked, it was never like hold my purse. It was like... That's how know. I think people took it that way. Well, that's on yeah. them. Uh, because I'll always get people that are like, I held your dog for you. Because I would do it to comics or fans. Because people right. would be like, she's so cute. Fans, sure. It's like a contest. My goal is never to like big time someone. Of like, course I not. Yeah. But so, but, but, uh, and so I think when you get,
get success. People have their feelings about that. And it really, I never talk about it because nobody ever feels bad for like a white woman who's doing well. Yeah, no, I know. But lonely is lonely. Isolation's isolation. There's what, just no whatever one to, it's for. For how long? How is it? Who else was doing that that I knew? You know, like I, I don't know a lot, a ton of other like, and I say no, I mean like I, I'm not gonna call these women. Like I like them or know them, but like I'm not gonna if I'm crying call. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And for the guys, it was just it's just you're forging stand up is you're forging your own path. If you're lucky, you've got friends that are at a similar level. But I've never written. That's on it. luck too, by the way. Like it is. that's a real. I like, I wasn't in the same position, but I was in a weird. But you wrote on Chappelle, so you had other writers. Like you know Chris. No, Rock. I didn't. I didn't have. It was me and Dave. There were no other writers. But what trick? Fine, fair enough. But I mean, what trickled was, like, out of people that? People who pitched up, but like it was. Then he leaves, and I'm yeah. by myself. And then like Rock and I are. Fr- it's like. Dave and Rock are not my peers, but they're right. No, but like, they were two of my closest. You know what I mean? Like, it's a weird. It's all kind of weird. I guess you had an access to that, where especially being a director, like yeah. doing other things. Yeah. So for the longest time, it was just me doing my jokes, and people out of jealousy, or maybe I, you know, didn't smile on the right day or something, and so therefore whatever. And then one day, it kind of, I realized like none of that mattered, and. I am a good person and I do like to help people. And it's so hard to get to a place where you can help people when you're still trying to figure out what you're doing. And so I think the loneliness comes from, and I think everybody in show business feels this way. Like you're like, nobody could fully relate to this because nobody has your exact career path. Right. And it's like, I, even my husband who like is the best guy in the world, like can't fully understand it. Yeah. So there is a little bit of loneliness like that. But at the end of the day, it's that's like, admissible. I mean, like, I'm not like yeah. I, if someone's rolling their eyes, it's like every it's everything's, you know. Oh, it's so and so rich. It's like, all right, well, if you live in America, you're even if you're relative to most people, you're rich. Right. So and then Americans go, ah, oh, white privilege or, or rich privilege or whatever. And it's like I, there's someone doing way worse than you. We have so much you food. Don't, you aren't <laughs> thinking about them and feeling guilty about your existence. That's not how humanity Operate. No, but we do require that just because something else somewhere else is bad, you're not allowed to ever have your own feelings. Right. Which is ridiculous. Of course it is. Because you could have cancer and someone could have double cancer and their parents were murdered. And it's like, does that make your cancer not hurt? Um, It is relative and people enjoy just shitting on that to make themselves feel better. But I think being But you're right that it's a self-fulfilling thing where it's like you put up an armor and then that exacerbates the problem and it's like... Right multiplies, multiplies, multiplies. Then it's just like, she stand off. And it's like, well, there's a reason. There's, I mean, I, it was a very competitive situation for a very long time and you're making up rules. No one's telling you how to do anything. And so I seek to correct that by always saying hi to people and by always, whether you like it or not, like giving a tag. Like if I, if you make your joke better or yeah. trying to make, create an opportunity because I know how hard it is and because social constraints are, constraints are such bullshit. And so I make myself feel better by trying to make other people feel better. But I think the loneliest time in the day is after you do a set, that drive back home where you're just like buzzing, but like who are you going to call at 1030 yeah. at night? And then you just eat a bunch of ice cream. And watch it's the funny. Office. It's like I don't it's a shame that we can't call ourselves 10 years earlier. You're still doing stand up. Well, no, 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 but it's also like Guess what? no one care no one no one's going to celebrate that you killed. Right. Do you know what I mean? Like no one's going to be that excited. Your husband like, "Oh, great. I don't know. I'm doing good. You're great at comedy." But you're like, "But I wasn't always." And I remember not being great and not being able to kill and now I can and I want to fucking celebrate it, but I it's just with myself. Yeah. And that feels hollow. And not totally hollow, but pretty hollow. It's it's like or a, arrogant. It's a, well, I just, I, it's a little buzz, and it's just yours, and you're like, maybe I'll just drive really fast, you know. Um, but at the end of the day, like, it's the best job in the world. Of course. Oh, it's not even close. That's what I'm saying. So all that rejection shit, they can keep. Again, no one's gonna remember the Mark Wahlberg movie you did. Thank you, Neil. And it's a popular movie. <laughs> Not even them, because we didn't get to do a second one. <laughs> right, but I'm saying they're going to remember. I know women that are obsessed with your act. 
not they're not obsessed with the Mark Wahlberg thing. They didn't I think read, there's a lot they'd of rather dudes out read there. your book than watch well, the Mark. I wish they would. Do you know what I mean? Like I know women that are very into you and it's not from pr- I think some people it's like you find the right someone's like, why don't you do a TV show or a movie? And I'm like, because the thing I want to say is best delivered verbally. I I know this is like the wind down. I think as an artist, as a multifaceted artist, you have things that you want to explore in other ways. And so I just haven't quite made it, made that thing yet. Right. Um, and it's frustrating at the end of the day because art is frustrating and trying is fucking difficult. And getting mm-hmm. people on board when you're not the flavor of the month and I guess like what I take from it, and I've said this before, is like it really is all about the at bats. Like the fact that people will still take the meeting or the pitch versus mm-hmm. no, we're good. That's how you know you're not dead in the water. Mm-hmm. So I just keep reminding myself that you're gonna, but you're also gonna work forever until I'm dead. Yeah, yeah. You know that. Yeah. What's the problem? <laughs> I'm I'm saying that jokingly, but also like. Just no problem. This, yeah, you, that thing about a, like my about career blocks. is my career is fucking deteriorating or whatever. And it's no, like, I mean no, that's it's not. It's, yeah, but I think all artists, you know, you're just like, is this? Why didn't I get invited? Yeah, I didn't make the list. Yeah, and it's like, it's now that list is toilet paper. Life's hard. It's life's hard. Like life, hum, being a human being is hard. That's what the. But being a comedian is even harder. Yeah, and and, and also e- the easiest and better. thing ever. Yeah, and it's, yes, it's if you're like, successful at it, and, and, and yeah, it's like a lot of stacks of shit. Even at the lowest level, though, like a comic's like, yeah, I did this gig over the weekend. It was shitty, and it's like, and then you got to get like you get to go to the movies in the middle of the day on a Monday. You also get to everyone's looking at you, and you get to fucking you. yell for an hour. Yeah, if you're if you're lucky, or even if it's twenty minutes, yeah. even if it's. I'm still excited when shit's just amplified. Like, I'll do open. I don't give a shit. Like, oh, yeah. Like, let's, it's, there's an amplification. Oh, yeah. Everyone's facing one direction and are I'm going to stand People in the that. back are hearing this. Yeah, I'm like, in. Great. Oh, like, man. I'm now having said that, I spend my entire existence complaining. Uh, thank you for doing this. It was Wait. Fun. What, what do you want to prove? I have to plug, plug something. This plug is why I'm something. here. Yeah. Um, I would like to plug. <laughs> I would like to plug. Um, of plugs. Please go to YouTube and check out Eliza's Locals. Yeah, what is that? Eliza's Locals, I just felt somewhere between a Netflix special and getting a showcase somewhere, there are so many comics who can do a rock solid 10 minutes. And so I produced three episodes of comedy specials. We did, we did 18 comics and they each do 10 minutes. Oh, I had no idea. I wish we'd talked about that. It, we're talking about, well, let's talk about it. You, How many comics total? There's 18 comics. 18. There's six comics per episode. There's three episodes. They each do 10 minutes. We shot it here in Koreatown. I wanted to give comics a sounded chance. Sounded racist. What? Go ahead. It sounded racist. In Koreatown? We shot it here in Korea. It just sounded sh- racist to me. No, no. Um, if anything, no. we're giving money to... <laughs> no, of it's not course. even a Korean establishment. Of course. Uh, we shot it in Koreatown, and it's a beautiful piece of tape. I just know how difficult this business is, and it's so difficult to get people to invest in you. And I was like, I can give these comics 10 minutes, a beautiful piece of tape. We'll get them on Sirius XM, or we'll get their, their comedy out there. And and they got to do that. So it's called Eliza's That's Locals. Great. So you paid for it and put it on your YouTube channel? 800 Pound Gorilla paid for it. I'm a producer on it, but I did pick the way that it looks. And it's on the 800, it's on 800 Pound Gorilla well, uh, YouTube, and they do a ton of other yeah. comedy specials. Um, but some of these comics are very close friends of mine. And I'm just like, why not show the world a polished 10 minutes yeah. that you have that you didn't have to shoot yourself? Great. Nobody says yes to anyone. And I had the Good. time and the, and the money. So we Good. did it. Yeah. Good. Thank you for doing that. Eliza's Thank Locals. Eliza's Locals on YouTube. I thought it, I didn't understand. I, yeah. Eliza's Locals. And then you got a podcast, of course, Ask Eliza. My podcast yeah. is called Ask Eliza Anything, where people write in with their burning questions. And I give you the harsh advice only your best friend or sister would give you. And of course, at Eliza on social media. Go. It's not at Eliza. S- try it's to, at Eliza S on Instagram. And I don't care about I'm Twitter. reading that and I said it's at Eliza. And I, at Eliza. Uh, it's at Eliza S. Go try to figure out what the secret word is that she hasn't blocked. Throw them all. Throw the book at her. It, it may not be the C word. It may be. It's adaptogens. It's <laughs>